of Mice and Men, Chapter 1, Part 3 of Chapter 1. The flame of the sunset lifted from the mountaintops, and dusk came into the valley, and a half-darkness came in among the willows and the sycamores. A big carp rose to the surface of the pool, gulped air, and then sank mysteriously into the dark water again, leaving widening rings on the water. Overhead, the leaves whisked again, and little puffs of willow cotton blew down and landed on the pool's surface. You going to get that wood? George demanded. There's plenty right up against the back of that sycamore. Floodwater wood. Now you get it. Lenny went behind the tree and brought out a litter of dried leaves and twigs. He threw them in a heap on the old ash pile and went back for more and more. It was almost night now. A dove's wings whistled over the water. George walked to the fire pile and lighted the dry leaves. The flame cracked up among the twigs and fell to work. George undid his bindle and brought out three cans of beans. He stood them about the fire, close in against the blaze, but not quite touching the flame. There's enough beans for four men, George said. Lenny watched him from over the fire. He said patiently, I like them with ketchup. Well, we ain't got any, George exploded. Whatever we ain't got, that's what you want. God Almighty, if I was alone, I could live so easy. I could go get a job and work and no trouble, no mess at all. And when the end of the month come, I could take my 50 bucks and go into town and get whatever I want. Why, I could stay in a cat house all night. I could eat any place I want, hotel or any place, and order any damn thing I could think of. And I could do all that every damn month. Get a gallon of whiskey or sit in a pool room and play cards or shoot pool. Lenny knelt and looked over the fire at the angry George, and Lenny's face was drawn with terror. And what I got, George went on furiously, I got you. You can't keep a job and you lose me every job I get. Just keep me shoving all over the country all the time. And that ain't the worst. You get in trouble. You do bad things and I got to get you out. His voice rose nearly to a shout. You crazy son of a bitch. You keep me in hot water all the time. He took on the elaborate manner of little girls when they are mimicking one another. Just wanted to feel that girl's dress. Just wanted to pet it like it was a mouse. Well, how the hell did she know you just wanted to feel her dress? She jerks back and you hold on like it was a mouse. She yells and we got to hide in an irrigation ditch all day with guys looking for us and we got to sneak out in the dark and get out of the country. All the time, something like that. All the time. I wished I could put you in a cage with about a million mice and let you have fun. His anger left him suddenly. He looked across the fire at Lenny's anguished face and then he looked ashamedly at the flames. It was quite dark now, but the fire lighted the trunks of the trees and the curving branches overhead. Lenny crawled slowly and cautiously around the fire until he was close to George. He sat back on his heels. George turned the bean can so that another side faced the fire. He pretended to be unaware of Lenny so close beside him. George, very softly, no answer. George, what do you want? I was only fooling, George. I don't want no ketchup. I wouldn't eat no ketchup if it was right here beside me. If it was here, you could have some. But I wouldn't eat none, George. I'd leave it all for you. You could cover your beans with it, and I wouldn't touch none of it. George still stared morosely at the fire. When I think of the swell time I could have without you, I go nuts. I never get no peace. Lenny still knelt. He looked off into the darkness across the river. George, you want I should go away and leave you alone? Where the hell could you go? Well, I could. I could go off in the hills there, someplace I'd find a cave. Yeah, how'd you eat? You ain't got sense enough to find something to eat. I'd find things, George. I don't need no nice food with ketchup. I'd lay out in the sun and nobody'd hurt me. And if I found a mouse, I could keep it. Nobody'd take it away from me. George looked quickly and searchingly at him. I've been mean, ain't I? If you don't want me, I can go off in the hills and find a cave. I can go away any time. No, look, I was just fooling, Lenny, because I want you to stay with me. 
Trouble with mice is you always kill them. He paused. Tell you what I'll do, Lenny. First chance I get, I'll give you a pup. Maybe you wouldn't kill it. That'd be better than mice. And you could pet it harder. Lenny avoided the bait. He had sensed his advantage. If you don't want me, you only just got to say so, and I'll go off in those hills right there, right up in those hills and live by myself, and I won't get no mice stole from me. George said, I want you to stay with me, Lenny. Jesus Christ, somebody'd shoot you for a coyote if you was by yourself. No, you stay with me. Your Aunt Clara wouldn't like you running off by yourself, even if she is dead. Lenny spoke craftily. Uh, tell me, like you done before. Tell you what? About the rabbits. George snapped. You ain't gonna put nothing on me, Lenny pleaded. Come on, George. Tell me, please, George, like you done before. You get a kick out of that, don't you? All right, I'll tell you, and then we'll eat our supper.